All right, so now that we've seen the host file, you know, aka inventory, we can execute our first example script. And if you take a look at the uh, the script that we have is detect route change v1. This is actually super simple. Actually, let me use Vim so that I could have some color coding. So this is actually super simple. It's only 10 lines. And if you minus, you know, the spacing is probably seven, six, seven lines. And, you know, what you could see from the line three to five, I would just have a bunch of imports. And we're going to talk about these uh, plugins in a bit. But, you know, basically this plugin's importing uh, our NetMiko to in order to send commands, and this is also to do the print results. And um, once we initialize Nornir, that we can actually do using the run method. And within the run method, it actually takes some several attributes. And in this case, because we're using the NetMiko plugin, that we use uh, the task equals NetMiko send command, and then we're uh, sending this command string of saying show IP route, and we're using the print results to uh, to go ahead and, and print back the results. So let's just go ahead and execute them because I always want to see something working. Um, it makes my day and it gives me a little bit more confidence as, uh, to, to move further, right? So if I do uh, V1, sorry, V1, and it's gonna go ahead and uh, go out and execute the show IP route uh, command concurrently. This is actually one of the big advantages of uh, Nornir is actually the concurrency and the other being, you know, uh, the execution environment that's totally in Python. So it's, you know, more Pythonic, right? So as you can see, it actually goes out there and um, the results that we've seen are, are just show IP routes from all three devices, right? So this is actually LX Core 1 and uh, it's, you know, showing the IP, uh, show IP route output as we've, probably all of us have seen over and over and uh, sometimes too much, right? So um, so let's talk about two things that we've seen in this example. One is the plugin and the other is the uh, the print results. So the first is the plugin. So Nornia actually operates in the realm of plugins. So if you look at the documentation, if you look at um, executing task that you can see that you know you're from Nornir import init Nornir and in this example of um, executing task it actually goes into the plugins and import command and um, you use another plugin to say print results and um, you know so they operate under the the realm of plugins and therefore they could have a lot of underlying libraries you know uh, for expandability in later on if there's you know something else that comes up and you could you know maybe i don't know salt base or whatnot maybe it's another library that other people wrote so then could they could easily just integrating and you don't have to relearn a lot of stuff your script is you know should also behave uh, the same so another question that uh, people might have that when they first initialize it is how do they know to uh, go ahead and execute the commands on these three devices i mean we know that we have this host.yaml file but we don't see this within our script right so how does it know that it just goes out to there and the answer is that there's an implicit location just like ansible you know if you don't do the dash i you know uh, inventory file that it has an implicit um, location that they look for and in this case they actually look for you know a host.yaml file or groups.yaml file for their inventory and if you take a look at this um, documentation that when you're doing the um, same uh, same documentation you can see that when they do the init you can actually give it a config file right so what is this config file so if you look at initializing nornir it actually talked about a configuration file and in this configuration file you can actually specify several attributes and one of them is where the inventory is so you don't really have to put the inventory in the current directory where you're executing your script but you do have to specify somewhere you know say in this example it's inventory uh, slash host.yaml 
and inventory uh, groups, IMO, and so on. So for us, you know, we we use the default behavior of taking the host file, and the second is, and uh, for somebody else, they might have to, uh, you know, they might specify in the configuration file and to uh, to specify a particular location for those files. So let's also talk about this print results. And for that, we're going to use the REPL again. So let's fire up the REPL and let's uh, kind of demystify this print results thing. Because it's actually kind of important because that um, actually deals with how we're going to get the result back and in, in the format that we need it to be in order for us to do something further with it. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's um, go ahead and repeat the first couple of lines as far as the import, you know, we're just going to import the init nornir and we're going to uh, import this uh, Namiko plugin and we're going to initialize nornir and with the, remember the implicit host file that we have these three hosts that we specify in host.yaml file and then we're going to do the same. We're going to uh, run some command and capture the output. In this case, you know, I have a show IP BGB summary, but we'll just do show IP route. And, you know, once we wait for the uh, for the result to come back. Now, if you look at the result, this is actually an aggregated result, right? So it's not just one big text file. It's actually a aggregated result. This is expected. So remember we talked about one of the advantages of Nornir is actually is concurrency. So it actually goes out and send out these commands to all three devices at the same time, wait for those results to come back and uh, put them in the nice dictionary like object uh, as a result. So in order for us to do this, we have to loop through them. And for, so let's just say, so for I and results, let's print I. Okay, so now we're seeing the uh, these just just the host name, so it doesn't do anything for us. So if we do result.keys, now you can see this is a dictionary-like object, right? So if we just do result and lx core r1, and then, oh, no, so it's actually within there, within that dictionary is actually a multi-result because there, there might be multi-part to it. In order for us to get to just the output that we need, we actually have to do this. So for result, that's just for I, so we loop in it again. And then if we print print I, that would be exactly what we need, right? We need the show IP route output in order for us to uh, do something with it. So now we know the print result is actually a a good way for us to you know aggregate that and then print out the separate results.